At the Yellowstone Supervolcano in Wyoming, many people often incorrectly think that the volcano is overdue for a major explosive eruption. However, there is no indication that it will erupt anytime soon. With this being said, there is an ever-present danger within a section of the park that is still quite deadly, hydrothermal explosions. With little or no warning, a several hundred foot to several mile wide crater could form in a massive explosion equivalent in energy to the detonation of several hundred kilotons of TNT. Such explosions have occurred 16 times in the vicinity of Yellowstone Lake during the last 14,000 years and will certainly occur again. Now, due to a recent scientific paper by L. Morgan and others, we have identified a potential trigger for the largest of these events. Since the end of the last ice age, three of the park's largest hydrothermal explosion craters, which each measured more than 1,500 feet wide, formed in mere minutes or hours after a large magnitude earthquake. In other words, if a magnitude 5.5 or larger, and especially if a magnitude 6 or larger earthquake occurs within 5 miles of any point on Yellowstone Lake, the area may need to be rapidly evacuated. Additionally, the paper noted something else which is interesting. It dated the latest major hydrothermal explosion within the park to sometime between 1660 and 1860. This latest explosion most likely originated at a fumarole field on the floor of Yellowstone Lake, ejecting boulders of material over a wide swath of ground and depositing several inches of ash in a two-mile radius. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, significant hydrothermal explosions are the most likely volcanic hazard the park will face in the next several thousand years. On average, a crater formed by a powerful hydrothermal explosion which measures more than 100 meters or 328 feet wide forms about once every 900 years. The most prominent of these hydrothermal craters can be found on the western and northern shorelines of Yellowstone Lake. These include Turbid Lake which formed in 6130 BC, Duck Lake which formed in 3050 BC, and the Indian Pond Crater which formed in 1350 BC. However, two of the largest craters are buried in the depths of Yellowstone Lake. Here, the 2,900-foot-wide Elliott's Crater formed 8,000 years ago, and the massive 7,300-foot-wide Mary's Bay Crater formed 12,800 years ago. Using mid-range estimates, they formed in powerful explosions equivalent in energy to the detonation of 155 and 526 kilotons of TNT, respectively. Both of these powerful explosions were only triggered after earthquakes of a magnitude of approximately 6.5 struck within the lake. The older Mary's Bay Crater previously represented an active hydrothermal system on the lake. Before the major earthquake occurred, a significant amount of pressure had built up under the lake due to the long-term heating of groundwater by superheated rock and magma deeper in the crust. However, at the time, the water line of the lake was approximately 50 feet higher than its current level. Thus, due to the greatly increased atmospheric pressure underneath the water, all of the highly pressurized water was kept from flashing to steam. Then, when the major earthquake occurred, large sections of the lake were uplifted by as much as 3 feet. This triggered scattered landslides which led to the generation of a more than 40 foot tall tsunami within Yellowstone Lake. The tall tsunami eventually traveled to the natural outlet of the lake which at the time was the modern site of Lehardy's Rapids. Upon impact, the tsunami quickly washed away a large glacial debris fan. This caused a significant portion of Yellowstone Lake to rapidly drain away, decreasing its overall depth by 50 feet. The decreased depth allowed for the highly pressurized water to finally flash to steam, reach a critical point, and produce a powerful explosion in the case of the Mary's Bay Crater. In the case of Elliott's Crater, there wasn't a large tsunami, but rather the earthquake caused uplift which fractured its overlying cap rock, allowing for pressure to be released. Although the lake level is much lower today than it was during these two prior explosion crater forming events, a subsequent large magnitude earthquake could trigger another powerful explosion. However, two of the five large recent craters in the vicinity were not linked to large earthquakes, so they can still form through gradual processes without a dramatic change in pressure. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Matthew Hawes for supporting this channel.